the roots of True 78 go back to the early days when our children were small. You would meet together at each other's kitchen tables. You would be on the phone. You would take walks in our neighborhood. And one thing more than anything else dominated your conversation. What was it? The faith of our own children and the children of our church and their theological education. We would take walks down Minnehaha Parkway and just talk about how do you teach the Bible to children? How do you get it in their hearts? We just talked the whole time, didn't we? Well, and part of it was being at Bethlehem and sitting under John Piper's preaching. There, just this huge vision of God. And growing up, I never got that. And when we first came to Bethlehem, it was like our theological world had been turned upside down. And my question was, how can I start with my own children feeding in that big vision of God so that when they're adults, they don't have to relearn everything? And you, you were teaching Sunday school at that time, too. And I think that yeah. was part of the conversation. And I remember distinctly sitting. John was using Acts 17.25. He is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. And that very morning, I was going into the, the kindergarten class, and my curriculum was scripting me to say God needed Moses' help for rescuing his people from Egypt. And I just said, what are we doing here? We're going two different directions. Well, we were creating the same problem in the Sunday school rooms that John right. was trying to correct in the sanctuary. I started in teaching Sunday school when I was in grade nine. It taught basically all through high school and college days. But then I got on staff in the church and was involved quite um, regularly and then became on, came on staff in 98. I went to school at University of Virginia in Charlottesville. So I went to the church then and then I got a master's in uh, religion from Westminster Seminary up in Philadelphia. And then there was an opening um, for the children's instructor, and I was got excited about that after I graduated and just went straight from seminary to um, becoming the children's instructor at Trinity. But it wasn't until someone gave me a set of cassette tapes to listen to from a conference that they had gone to, and I listened to these tapes, and, and David and Sally were talking about man-centered versus God-centered teaching. To be honest, I, I started to cry because I realized for the first time that I was teaching in a man-centered way. I had no idea that that's what I was doing. I realized that I needed to confess and I needed to, to start researching what is God-centered teaching really look like. And I wasn't satisfied with the curriculum we were using that I inherited. I just felt very watered down and I didn't know. I looked around, couldn't find anything, and then I thought, ah, if anybody's doing God-centered children's ministry, it's going to be John Piper's church. Where I saw this was at Bethlehem Baptist. I was privileged to do an internship at the church back in 1998, which I'm realizing right now is 25 years ago, which was the year that Children's Desiring God began. I called him up and uh, I talked to Sally and they had just gotten started with the curriculum. So I got so excited about it. I said, can I come? <laughs> and she said, yes. So I jumped on a plane and went out and saw what they were doing. And I really got in on the ground floor. All the curriculum had not been produced. Um, so we kind of helped pilot it a little bit. That's where Children Desiring God was so different from everything else that was out there at that time. Everything was so fun and man-centered, but it had no substance to it and nothing that would have lasting value in the lives of our children in that comprehensive discipleship that we wanted to see happen. To begin with, I didn't think you could actually convey deep theological truths to children in the way that it was actually happening before my very eyes there at Bethlehem. And then on top of that, to see how the kids were getting it. They weren't getting it at a mature level. They weren't getting it at an adult level, but they were getting it. And they're, they're talking about it at home. Parents tell us that the kids go home and they talk about it. And they, ha they talk about what they've learned in Sunday school. And they didn't do that before. Yeah, it was interesting. One of my um, fellow pastors on our staff had his daughter in the Sunday school class. And it was on the ABCs of God. 
he said to his daughter, Talisha, he said, so what did you learn in Sunday school today? And she said, I learned that God was incomprehensible. And uh, Godfrey, who's a pastor, says, incomprehensible, do you even know what that means? And then she just rattled off exactly what it meant, and he was just blown out of the water. And she, he said, you're learning that in Sunday school? It was so encouraging to hear them interacting with rich theological truths about who God is and what he's done for us in Christ and what he's accomplishing in the world. For pretty much my whole um, life growing up, I uh, went to Bethlehem Baptist Church with my family. It's really hard to understand what God is like as a kid when, I mean, a lot of the things that are being preached and the sermon are above my head and I can't comprehend them as an eight-year-old, but getting to hear these are the distinct attributes of God um, was really helpful for me. I mean, I went through quite a few. I also went through the How Majestic Is Your Name series. It was cool to hear all this context behind the names of God that you wouldn't understand just reading the text as a kid. So getting to hear, you know, what does Adonai mean? What is Jehovah Jireh, and you know, and being able to connect the depth of the meaning of these names to uh, the story of the gospel and the stories of Jesus that you're hearing, or reading this Old Testament story of um, God's majesty and being able to connect, oh, that's Yahweh, what does Yahweh mean as the name of God? When I became the pastor here at Concord just a few years later, all that was just germinating in my mind and heart. It's like, if there's a way we can begin tweaking and changing and transitioning kind of a, a lower expectation for children to something that was bigger and grander and more glorious. I thought that that was worth the effort in leading in that direction. And At first I was nervous and our children started, we were nervous about Okay, it's going to be more work on everyone, right? Like it, it's it's going to be more work to you have to put a lot more time into preparing your lesson. You can't just show up. When we begin to tackle those kinds of issues in next generation ministries head on, our teachers and workers were almost immediately on board and enthusiastic. Yes, let let's give the kids all we can possibly give them, still at their level as much as possible, but let's raise the bar and you know tell of the greatness of God and declare his glory to the next generation. We can do this. The greatest thing for me was when I started seeing the, the fruit from my, our teachers. Um, and the teachers' lives were changed. They were getting excited about their faith. They were getting excited about, they said, we haven't, I mean, we've taught for years, but this has really been challenging me as a teacher to go deeper. You can't look at the passage and then look at all the, what does this teach us about God, the themes, and, and figure out where those come from the scripture and not be encouraged about God's sovereignty and God's kindness and God's goodness and God's mercy. You know, when you teach others, you learn more yourself, but our teachers were being blessed and encouraged by what they were beginning to share from Children's Desiring God curriculum at the time, which is now True 78. In college, I lost two very close friends. Um, we've had some other students that have lost um, family members um, or have lost other friends that they had in college. We had a daughter that we, we lost uh, to suicide, and that was very tragic and very difficult. And, and it was uh, one of the hardest things to ever go through as a parent. And, but without the Lord, there and understanding um, his compassion and his caring and his concern for us, um, I don't know how people will do it. I'm learning that a lot of students did not, I mean, they weren't raised in the church a lot of times, but they also weren't raised with um, Sunday school curriculum that was teaching them um, deep biblical truths. The key is really having a clarity of understanding on the sovereignty of God recognizing that everything that comes my way comes through his hand. It's not something that I have to look at and say, why me or why this? Yeah, being able to lean on some of these promises of God, the names of God, being able to see, 
you know, who God is, is just the key in understanding, you know, I can trust that God is faithful, I can trust that he is good, even if I don't understand it right now. I'm grateful for the teaching. One of the things I'm, I'm really grateful for is the relationship with the True 78 staff. David, Sally, Jill, I just want to say how much I thank God for you. I glorify his name for the heart and vision that he gave you so many years ago and the way you have so diligently labored. Thank you, Sally. I know she spent many late nights writing the curriculum and, and poured so much of her energy and time into it. The work that they've put in has made an impact. Um, I've seen how it has grown my walk with the Lord um, and my knowledge of God and of the Bible. Um, you guys are used by the Lord in so many powerful ways that I am just so grateful. So I praise God for his work in you. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For 25 years.